Timeline, man. Timeline of this game. Oh! <laughs> there he is! There's my boy sitting down to dinner. Oh my god. Yes! And welcome to GT Not Live, where you know what I miss? What do you miss, Matt? Ilvis. Ilvis. You know Ilvis? You mean like the cabin? Yes. Stonehenge? As the, as Stonehenge. The cabin. What does the fox say? Yeah. Great. I, I don't know why, and this is completely random, but this morning I woke up and I was singing the song Stonehenge by Ilvis. And I'm like, you know what? There hasn't been like a funny, stupid, viral meme song that I've been aware of for a while. Am I, am I unaware of this? Is this a TikTok thing now? Like, uh, can you come up with any stupid, like viral, goofy parody song or something at this point? I'm, I'm looking for recommendations. For those of you who don't know, Ilvis uh, was, the, was the creator uh, behind What Does the Fox Say? Which, you know, obviously was one of the biggest like viral songs ever on the platform. It was a big focus on like a YouTube Rewind. Like it had this really goofy music video where everyone's dressed up in like fox suits, you know, whipping and neighing through the like forest. There's a terrible <laughs> CGI fox that ascends to heaven through like a UFO. If you've never seen the music video for What Does the Fox Say? Do yourself a favor and go visit it. Though that being said, Ilvis, the, the creators of that song, Actually, their, their roster goes deep, and it goes hard. My personal favorite is Stonehenge, slightly more mature, but I think the writing is, like, so on point, so funny, and the song is catchy. There's John Engeland, which is about, like, some political figure that I know literally nothing about outside of he likes standing in the rain, is a very romantic figure, and his, his thighs are very muscular. Mm -hmm. Um... Do you have a favorite Ilvis song? I, The Cabin, hands cabin. down. Solid. That's, that's their kind of, like, romantic one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a smooth jam. Oh, the smoothest oh, they, of jams. They go, they go smooth. <laughs> they go very smooth. But anyway, I, I, was, I woke up and I'm like, oh, Stonehenge, I love that song. What the hinge is that again? I'm like, what, what? I need a new one of those. I need a new parody song or like funny tongue-in-cheek like music artist. And I don't know of any right now. Like I haven't been aware of one in a while. No, I feel like a lot of parodies get written off as very millennial and cringy, especially oh, on TikTok. I mean, that's... That's yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Millennial Cringe. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, hi, can I have cheeseburger? Yes. Um, that's even old for me. That's like Facebook. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so so you Gen Zers don't have like parodies. Do you not have enough fun in your life to dance like a fox in the forest and... and ponder what sound it's making no i think everyone is miserable well, that's so sad right it's like no one can have fun anymore like <laughs> i see i see this millennial doing no harm on tiktok yeah. taking a popular song and making a parody about loving dogs with it great and she'll delightful. get drilled into the earth for it oh that's so sad right have fun all right so hey um <laughs> i don't know if you have any recommendations let me know because I am millennial cringe and I want funny song to listen to. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, today, uh, while we were away last week, um, you didn't know this, but we were away last week. Surprise. Uh, we're filming a couple things for some upcoming episodes of Game Theory, uh, including a, spoiler alert, a revisit to Game Lab, which is kind of cool. Um, and as part of the final episodes, I'm like, we revisited all sorts of past things or we're in the process of revisiting all sorts of past things and i'm like game lab i'd love to re redo like one version of game lab or like some some throwback to game lab so that's coming up it's it was super fun it's really cool um i hope you like it uh so we were we were out in texas filming with a bunch of tanks which was cool but while the, we were gone the there's a new fnaf game <laughs> there's another new fnaf game surprise <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I mean, I, I am surprised, actually, uh, because for those of you who don't know, you know, we follow FNAF here a lot. That's that's not the surprise and that you wouldn't know. The surprise is that after 2023 was wrapped, there wasn't a lot of FNAF in the news, right? Like, all the books were supposed to be done, all the games, there, there weren't any games predicted to be out on the horizon, like Ruin and Help Wanted 2 were kind of the last two in the in the pipeline that we knew about. Um, and then the movie obviously came out, and while we all expect, and you know, there's been news about like Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is in development and this and that, 
you know, the ETA of that and when it's shooting and all that, all a complete mystery, right? And so it's one of those things that like 2024, as I saw it, was like the, the year without FNAF, which would be kind of crazy. Um, it feels so odd to say. It feels like it's this thing that just hits us every other month. But, uh, but yeah, it was 2024, the year without FNAF. And yet here we are, top of 2024, and apparently there's a new game. And they also announced that the books are restarting or like that there's, there's a new book that's coming out later this year. There, uh, there's a glow in the dark book apparently similar to what I, it seems like it's supposed to be similar to um, the journal number three from Gravity Falls, but apparently it's a coloring book with glow in the dark elements. So that's, I'm, I'm pretty hyped about that just because I, Ollie really liked the coloring book and now if there's a glow in the dark coloring book, I'm excited about that. Seems like a good place to hide lore. But obviously the biggest news is that there's a new game and it's a game based off of Into the Pit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that is the first book in the series of the Fazbear Frights books. So, you know, there was Fazbear Frights and there was Tales of the Pizza Plex. At this point, there's, what, 12, 16, 18, 20, I don't know, there's 23, I don't know, there's some egregious number of books that I've read across these two series. And the very first one of the very first series is Into the Pit. This is the one that became iconic for all the memes about time-traveling ball pits, right? Where a boy named Oswald goes into a, a, a dirty, nasty ball pit and then winds up in 1985 to the night of the missing children's incident, right? He's like, whoa, look at this. This is an old pizzeria. And whoa, why are there police here? And why is there cops? And it's like, uh-oh, there's dead bodies in the back. Whoopsie. It's a very strange story. Obviously, anytime you're talking about a, a ball pit that f makes you travel through time, you know things are going to get weird. Uh, and what's even stranger, though, is that apparently they decided to make a game out of that concept, which I'm intrigued about. Uh, so that's what we're reacting to today, since I didn't have a chance to really get into it last week. Uh, Ash has pulled up the trailer. We're going to react to that, as well as a couple of hidden images that yes. were found across the web. Secret pictures. Oh, secret pics. Yes. Nice. Secret pics about, uh, that were also found in association with this. So I guess without any further ado, we should just hop into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, without any further ado, let's just hop into it. This is the FNAF official Into the Pit trailer leak. So the story goes, right, that this leaked early and everyone's like, is this real? Is it not real? And Scott went online and said like, hey, this is leaked. I didn't anticipate this coming out, but I'm totally okay with that, right? So this is an approved leak. Yes. Okay. So that's good. As opposed to the Roblox, there was also a FNAF Roblox leak <laughs> from like a month ago that people played and Scott was like, well, didn't want people to see that because this is not anywhere close to being finalized or finished. Um, so this is an approved leak as opposed to that Roblox one, which was an unapproved leak. So that's why we're reacting to this one. Um, FNAF official Into the Pit leak trailer. I'm so curious about this. I'm so curious about this. <laughs> cool. Okay. Already off the bat. Hey, welcome. It's, it's second three. Um, already off the bat, I, I would be confused if I were you, if you had not read the like hundreds of stories that this franchise has produced. So it's Jerry's Pizza, right? <clears throat> this entire... The, the Fazbear Frights books have this recurring theme of new restaurants and new establishments being put into old Freddy's locations, right? And so this, in this case, Jerry's Pizza in the Into the Pit book is actually an old Freddy location, an old Freddy's location that after it closed down and was vacant for a while, got kind of like repurposed and re-upped into Jerry's Pizza. And... I think that was one of the, the most helpful things about that book series for the overall lore of the franchise is getting us as theorists and getting the community to really think about like, hey, the, the, the realities of this situation, right? I think a lot of people, you know, and, and myself included in the early days of theorizing are like, well, this is the pizzeria and that pizzeria exists forever, right? But I think one of the cool things that FNAF has done is take the reality of a business closing and saying like, well, that vacant building is going to be around and it needs to be protected by a security guard and people are going to loot it. Or, hey, that building is going to pass on into the hands of other people and be turned into something else. And it's going to be transformed into a new business, but the history of that location remains. Or like we saw in Ruin and uh, Security Breach, other things get built on top of it. You know, over time, buildings get demolished or they get covered over and you have this kind of like stacking and layering of history. And as the franchise has gotten bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper, you have more and more layers of history be being added onto it. 
And so this, so Into the Pit was really like as the first story out of the gate of the first book series. And Scott had been like, the books are going to help solve the mysteries of the past and give you clues to the mysteries of the past. This is one of the first ones, right? It's like, hey, this was the, the original location where kids died, where they went missing. And it's now been repurposed into like a new pizza place, which is cool. Uh, I do want to call out the fact, though, that, that this is like SNES era graphics, it looks like, which I'm all about. A, a right off the bat, very excited about anything SNES era. SNES, Super Nintendo, was the was really my childhood console growing up. I know that makes me like dead and buried and oh, three times over, but like, to, in my opinion, like the best games and some of the best art styles came out of that era. Just because it, there was such an emphasis on storytelling, there was such an emphasis. You had some amazing RPGs coming out of there, like Chrono Trigger and Earthbound. Like Super Mario really defined what the platformer was at that point and found itself there. And the colors were so bright and vibrant, and you had enough pixels that. It wasn't just like the 8-bit stuff from Nintendo era, but it wasn't so many that you were getting into the like the more complicated realistic graphics that we are today. Like it, it really found the sweet spot for me in terms of gaming. And uh, so to see a game coming out that is of this era, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. Oh, the animations are great. Oh, he's a squeaky boy. Oh, oh yeah, he's got, he's got a good back. Right, that is defined. Yeah, his it, man, his 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 deltoids. <laughs> look look at that. That man has played a lot of Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> right, he is he is squeezing that <laughs> ring. <laughs> Dragow or whatever his name is. He yep. is he is fighting Dragow oh, and yeah. running through the land of fitness. He right just now. pulled like thirty shoulder presses. <laughs> right, he is getting perfects across the board. Ring is so proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you're playing Ring Fit Adventure. I need to bust mine out. I <laughs> yeah, love dude. it. For those of you who don't know, uh, Ring Fit Adventure, it's it's basically like the Switch's equivalent of like Wii Fit or whatever. You got this like big old ring thing and you squeeze it a bunch and it works your body in some way. <laughs> and it's surprisingly difficult. The cardio is hard. You're like, you're trying, you're pl please register my running. And you're like, your knees aren't high enough. And you're like, God, how much higher do I need to get my knees to register? Like I'm walking at a brisk pace here. Uh, it's, it's a fun game and uh, it's great cardio, but yeah. He be he be squeezing that ring. He's squeezing it hard. He's squeezing it hard. You know, I don't think any video game character's butt can compete with uh, with Solid Snakes from Metal Gear Solid. I mean, I think that's pretty well established at this point that when it comes to butts in video gaming, that's a Solid Snake, hands down. But uh, apparently, we have a new contender for best back in gaming, which is absolutely a spring trap. <laughs> spring trap, William Afton. Look at that definition. Um. I also want to, so he's got five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So again, like th that shouldn't be a surprise because we know that Springtrap has five fingers and that he is of this era of the more humanoid suits, which is one of the earlier eras. Um, that was a big revelation when I was working on timeline stuff back in the day was, hey, the number of fingers on these suits are really kind of connecting generation and generation. Um, interesting that he's got three toes, which again, maybe connects him to Midnight Motorist in some way. Um, which is still to this day the one that people are like, why, why are there three toes standing outside that broken window? Um, but I love this. I love how smooth the animation is. It's great. Um, and again, you get this like great, immediately attractive art style with the pixels. But because of modern technology and what we can do with art nowadays, you don't have as much like choppy graphics as you did back in that era. So it's the, the best of both worlds, right? You have the kind of aesthetics of that 16-bit era with the fluidity and motion that you can achieve today. It's really good. Like, this is awesome already. I'm hooked. And this is probably, to be honest, this is probably the scariest Springtrap has ever looked to me. Like, I've never been one. Like, so I know people, like, love Springtrap. I like him as a concept and I like him as a character. I've never been a big fan of his design. I've never found him particularly scary because it's, you know, a rotten corpse in a bunny suit. Like, even in FNAF 3, which is really his Hallmark game, He's kind of goofy. He's like, whoa! He does this kind of like curious lean towards you as his jump scare. He's not. He's not all that frightening. This is terrifying to me. Like this is horrific, and I think that's good because Into the Pit is actually a, a very scary story, which we'll talk about here. I'm sure at the end of this. This is great. This is cutscene. This is really good. Yeah, I'm totally gonna come with you, weird, creepy bunny man. 
What, what kid is saying like, yeah, I'll go with that guy. Totally fine. I mean, he probably looks a lot better when the lights are on. Nah. You don't think so? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh no, he's all squeaky and so he needs to oil his joints. He does. What do we got? Okay, so I'm assuming this is Oswald. Looking around the old Pete's place. Oh, this is awesome. This is like, um, Clock Tower. Okay, here, there's there's dialogue and stuff. So here, let's let's go through some of this one at a time. So I'm assuming this is Oswald. Oswald is the kid who goes into the time travel ball pit. Why would he be... Okay, so this is up here. So... Okay, so it's, it's, I'm trying to think of how you would make a game out of this, because it's an interesting concept. Because in the story, as I remember it, granted this is the first book of many books, and so forgive me if I get things wrong and maybe I, we could pull up a wiki or something. But um, Oswald ends up going to the pizzeria, the, 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 the modern day pizza place, because he is... Like, it's, it's summer break, and his dad has to work, and his mom has to work, and so, he, you know, they, they're like, well... We can't keep you at the library all day or whatever, so here's like a couple bucks. Go hang out at the pizza place until we're ready. And so he goes to the pizza place, he eats the pizza, he likes the soda, and then he just hangs out there, right? And he, he loves to draw. He's a, he's a big artist, I remember. Why does he go into the ball pit? I forget why he goes into it in the first place, but it's, it's this old, dusty, janky ball pit over in the corner, and it, it's got like a caution tape over it. Why it's still there after all these years is negligence and stupid, but you know, but he's like, okay, I'm gonna hop into this. For some reason, is he hiding from his dad or something? I forget, but he climbs into it and then he pops out and then he's teleported to, to Freddy's. And so all like, so this scene is in the past, which I think is an important point here, um, that this whole thing here is him going back to the past to experience Freddy's because the modern day pizzeria does not have any of the trappings of Freddy, Foddy, Bo Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, none of this stuff. So this is him crawling around in the past. He's got stripes and brown hair. He's clearly the crying child. He's not, that's a joke. I just wanted to call, in case anyone's going to stripes! He's got a striped shirt! He's white with brown hair! But the stripes are in a warmer palette It's this true, time. It, it can't be the same. No. It can't be the same. No, it's, it's a warm palette. That's not, that's not Gregory, who's also a robot, who's also a crying child. Definitely not. No. Ticket eater, I love that. <laughs> oh. So, uh, I don't know if it's a weird, that's just a weird shadow, isn't it? Just boxes and stuff. I thought for a second I saw like feet there. I'm like, ooh, that's spooky. Uh, for those of you who don't know, have you ever seen Clock Tower? Have we talked about Clock Tower here? Clock Tower uh, PS1? I thought it was SNES. Yeah, it's SNES, I thought. No, it is PlayStation. This reminds me a lot of Clock Tower for. Was there an SNES version? I thought there was. Because that's why I associate Yeah, there it is. This is from World of Long Plays. Thank you, World of Long Plays, for showing us this one. But this is already giving me vibes of Clock Tower. So Clock Tower was the first horror game that I became aware of, right? Look at this gameplay. <laughs> it's so slow, right? Wow. So, so unbelievably slow. But that was the game. And you would have this, this uh, scary guy pop out with his giant pair of scissors and he would chase you. Oh, there she goes. This is her running. This is what I had to go off of when I was a kid. This was my horror game. Wow. Right here. Oh, look at that. Spooky. Don't do it. The other side's too far away. Can I find a section where he, he pops out? Oh, okay, this, is, this is collapsing here. Oh, come on. Is there, a, is there a moment where he jumps in? Oh, this right here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's the sound. He's, he, he became iconic with the sound. Yeah, there he is! Look at him go! Look at him go! Look oh, go. man, he's got the blades! No, he got the blades! He's gonna be chopping you. Wow, dude. He, he do be chopping. Go! Walk faster! No! Man, this is... I mean, the tensions, everyone is so slow. Look at how slow everyone is. But the tension is high. Get out of there, get out of there. Oh, oh he's getting mad about the clock tower. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here he goes, spoiler alert. This is one of that, there's a lot of endings. Oh. <laughs> well, that was easy. Bye. Thank goodness. There it is. <laughs> and it just lasts. 
Everything is so slow in this game. Oh, man. Laura. Okay, and then they're like, oh, hey, and then they're fast. Okay, okay. okay. anyway. The, but that was the horror game that I grew up with. And so this has already given me like solid clock tower vibes where you're walking around and then all of a sudden like spring trap's going to pop out and he's going to like do 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 do. He's probably a little bit more menacing than small man with scissors, but the music was what got everyone back in the day. Ah, oh, it's a great game. Uh, if you can find a sped up modernized version of it, I don't know if it exists. I haven't thought about it or played it in many a year, but uh, that's worth checking out. It's like one of the granddaddies of this style. Uh, okay, so we're still wandering around in the past, employees only. Okay, <laughs> this is it. This is, see, this is, this is what I was describing before. Where, so this is modern day, right? So this is modern day uh, in, in, what's his face? Uh, J Jeff's Pizza, that's what it is. In, this is modern day Jeff's Pizza, where there's just an old ball pit off in the corner, and Oswald's like, WTF, man, why is this here? And it's, it's clearly like boarded off and it's like, don't use. I love the fact that there's just small children's handprints all over it, like, ah! So this is where the twist comes in, right? So you would think that, oh, boy travels through time and experiences the original missing children's incident. You'd think that that would be the story, right? Like, that's it. But that isn't. The, the real plot of Into the Pit is Oswald's dad here gets pulled into the ball pit by Springtrap, and then Springtrap becomes Oswald's dad. And, and all of a sudden, Oswald starts seeing Springtrap wherever his dad is, and Springtrap doesn't talk. He's like, he's there at the dinner table, and he's like, ah, oh, yes, here I am, son. And, and Oswald's obviously freaked out by the fact that his dad is Springtrap. But again, it's weird, and I'm curious how, what they're going to do with the game for this, because... The only time that Springtrap actually gets like aggressive or attacks Oswald is at the end of the whole thing when Oswald's like, I need to get my dad back. And so he tries to fight Springtrap to get his dad back. And, but otherwise it's just these weird uncanny moments with like scenes of everyday life with your dad as Springtrap. And so it's like Springtrap driving him down the road, like ready to drop him off at the library or at school. It's like, bye Springtrap. Or like, like I said, breakfast is this really memorable scene where it's like they're eating breakfast and Springtrap's just sitting there and Oswald's all freaked out. And his mom's like, what, what are you doing, man? Like, what's wrong? Um, so I, I guess they're gonna make Springtrap more aggressive and attack you more, I guess. But it, it becomes much more about solving the mystery of what's going on than battling Springtrap. So here we go. Before we move on. Yeah, please. Um, are you seeing those pictures on the wall? The drawings? It's like right where that text sh showed up, like right next to the net. Do you see how those lines like, sort of like, form? Low, like these things? Yeah, like you can see two legs on the right. And if you go up, it kind of looks like oh, a bear. Oh, 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 it is legs. I, I, oh, yeah. Oh. That does look like a bear, doesn't it? Weird. Is that like a chica? Maybe? I, it like might it, be, you it got might a big, be a chica. You got a big round head, maybe a beak or something, some arms. I mean, the stature looks correct. The stature looks correct, right? Got those, got the legs and the kneecaps. Huh, that is interesting. Is there, you're totally right. I, I don't know what is next to her. Right? I don't know what if that's, this? that that's more visible in like subsequent frames. Right. But like, it's definitely something and it's, it feels deliberate. Oh yeah, no, totally. Like. Well, again, if this is a corner of the, if, if Jeff's Pizza is a reused Five Nights at Freddy's, the Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, Freddy Fazbear location, right? You would assume that there is memorabilia and stuff hanging out in the background from the time when it was an old Freddy's restaurant. And so maybe this is like an old p painting or mural on the wall that has been like either papered over or repainted. Like even the faded paint here, right? Like mm -hmm. this is, this is clearly not modern day paint. This is the old like Freddy's location checkerboard painting down here, but it's fading with time where it's been, you know, covered up. And so I think that applies to that stuff too, which is a really good call. Actually good, good spotting. I didn't even notice that. Um, I just thought it was like wear and tear on the wall. Uh, but yeah, which, which again is a cool way of seeding out details and seeding out a story here where you think like, oh, the clues are the obvious things like the ball pit and things like that. But really you're getting a sense of history by the things that are kind of covered up on the walls. Oh, no, it totally is. So it's Bonnie on the left, Freddy center, cheek on the right. You can see Bonnie's base a little bit. Is that what that is? Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, totally. You're absolutely right. Oh, and there's, yeah, oh, and there's Freddy. There's little bear ears right up there. Right, it's like that let's party image. It is, 
Yep, that's it. You're exactly right. Good eye. Thanks. That one, Ash. Ooh. Nice. Um, his dad, man. He's got he's got big old arms. If uh, everyone in this game, man, is just jacked. You've got jacked. <laughs> for, forget Spring Bonnie and Spring Trap. You've got jacked Bonnie, and also jacked Dad. Look at Spring those. jacked. Spring jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been memeing on like Helpy, and there's like Buffy, you know, Buff Helpy and stuff like that. This is you got Buff Springtrap. He's been he's coming for he's coming for your kids and the games. But I, I do gotta say, uh, Oswald's dad here, massive forearms. Oh, huge. Ma that guy is doing like wrist curls for days. Wrist curls. Oh yeah. Huge. huge. All right, here we go. So we got. Awesome. Okay. What were you thinking, hiding in that nasty old thing? Didn't you hear me calling you? Oh, so yeah, maybe that is him hiding. Was he hiding out just because he was mad at his dad? I'd have to refresh myself on why Oswald gets into this nasty ball pit in the first place. But yeah, hiding in that nasty thing. Did you hear me calling you? Oh, awesome. Awesome. I love how mildly concerned Oswald is. Look, look at his reaction face. <laughs> He's like, oh no. This is a great jump scare. This is this is Springtrap's best jump scare. This is Springtrap's best game already. This trailer, this one minute of content is already the best thing that Springtrap <laughs> has been in in the 10 year history of this franchise. Done, point proven. Look at that. That's awesome. That's so good. This is, hor that's horrific. It's also a little bit weird canonicity wise because there's a, a, a man inside that suit who wouldn't have those like sharp pointy teeth, but you know, whatever. This is great. Oh, this is awesome. That's awesome. That is such a good scene. <laughs> Meanwhile, Oswald's like, oh no, I'm still in my resting animation. It's an, oh, ooh. That's interesting. Hiding in the mask. <laughs> this is so good. Nope. Oh, that's horrific. Do we know when it's coming out? Oh. This, is, this looks great. Okay, so here, let's let's quickly go through this bottoms. Okay, so and this is going exactly the way that um, this is going exactly the way that the story does, where Springtrap comes out of the ball pit, takes the dad, and then replaces the dad, basically. Hold on, are you kidding me? Is that music, man? <laughs> is that music? Is that DJ Music Man? I think it is. I, I in 1985. That's weird, right? I was about to call that. So I wanted to react to that in two different steps here. Step one is I'm surprised to see music because that is definitely Music Man. He's got oh. the headphones. He's got the face. Like that is our boy. That is our boy, Music Man. It even looks like it almost says like something, man. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, th that was gonna be my follow up, which is. This is, so again, 1985 is very clearly the established date of the missing children's incident in Into the Pit, which is, you know, was with this being the first one and Scott being like, it's going to help you solve the mysteries of the past. That, that was the moment that everyone's like, oh, clearly they're trying to tell us the year of the missing children's incident. Music man? That's wild. Press X to doubt. I don't know. That's weird. That's a weird one. There's no way Music Man was there in the original set. There's no way. No, I mean, unless there was like separate s sets or just characters that existed within like an established canon that weren't seen in restaurants. Like that's so weird. It, it's a weird one. Cause- uh, We would have seen him way before like Security Breach. Right, cause, uh, right? Cause, cause also we're talking about different eras of Music Man, right? Like, uh, excuse me, as I put on my Music Man expert cap, but like Music Man is is most associated with the fun time animatronics. We never see him in sister location, but his design aesthetic of the white and pink with more like humanoid or clown like appearance, that is of the era of the fun time animatronics, which we see in sister location, obviously. And the first time we see Music Man is in FNAF 6, um, a pizzeria simulator where he's just kind of like banging his cymbals in the background. We never actually see him, we just can buy him. And then he becomes DJ Music Man in Security Breach. So if anything, if anything, you could, 
you could conceive, we, everyone's been confused, and, and us included, right, about like, hey, where does sister location fit into this? Where do the fun time animatronics fit into this? Help wanted to start to give clues as to, hey, maybe there's some more overlap or like some, some things happening concurrently with the fun times and the original set. Maybe they're closer than you think. But even still, that would be basic Music Man. That would not be DJ Music Man. DJ Music Man feels like he was specifically for Security Breach. So, as, as, as happy as I... Trust me, I am not going to complain anytime I see a casual drop of the Music Man. That's my thing. You know, I, I live for a casual drop of Music Man. That being said, from a lore standpoint, I see this and I'm like, that, is that real? That's, that's, that's true? Because this is absolutely the past. This is, you know, 1985. Um, this wouldn't be Jeff's Pizza Ria or anything. So that's weird. Which also gets me to question, and I, I'm sure this is the question that's circulating online right now, which is, is this canon? Because <laughs> it's a book, it's a book story, but it's being set in a video game. And for a long time, the video games had their canonicity and the books had their canonicity, but all of a sudden, once you start making video games of the books, you're crossing your streams. Mm, right? I, okay. I don't know how much we've tapped into carnival theory. Like the theory of the carnival? Carnival theory. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the field of carnival theory. I don't know. I'm, I'm, intri I'm intrigued about the, the field of study that is carnival theory. I am too, yeah, now I'm... that I say it. But, <laughs> you know, I'm referring more to the assertion that there was a carnival yes. before the events of FNAF that we see yes. um, where most of our fun time animatronics were at, right? Yeah, you're, okay, so... Explain that exactly. Oh God. Okay. Look at you. So, Look at you with your your deep lore FNAF knowledge. I okay. So the first time I heard about this theory, it was from none other than John FNAF. Oh, John FNAF. Um, uh -huh. and he pulled things like the game files from Ruin and placeholders, where mm -hmm. it's like, um, do we tease the carnival thing here? Because mm -hmm. he was trying to speculate like why we saw all of those costumes. Mm -hmm. Um in like ruin slash security breach, but yep. we didn't see them pop up. Right. And John theorized with the help of like some images and like concept mm -hmm. sketches that he found from, you know, Scott and around the internet, um, that there was a carnival before mm -hmm. FNAF, especially like with the fun time animatronics and that's where they were first. Right? Yeah, that also coincides with uh, Balloon Boy's uh, minigame, the the Balloon Boy's uh, flight. There's also the Funko toys that people have been wondering about for a while which are uh, the Balloon Fun Toys, just in case you're curious. Fun Toys FNAF, I think it's something like that. Yeah, these guys, Funko Pops. Oh, <laughs> yeah, these guys. You've got the Balloon Freddy, like there's a bunch of these. Carnival Fun Freddy, things like that. These guys, where it's like Circus, Fo Circus Foxy, Balloon Chica, all of that, right? So that, very, very confusing for people. And so, you know, kind of like what Matt said in his timeline, where there was like a traveling show or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, was that actually part of a carnival? So I look at that poster, especially the style of it. Yep. When they had like those show um, mm -hmm. posters in front of things like circuses mm -hmm. or events or mm -hmm. things like that. Is it from that that we're seeing this mm -hmm. now brought into a pizzeria where yep. even though DJ Music Man isn't here, he has existed for longer than we know, and right. he was just brought back. Well, it's also, I mean, and it's also, again, to like reinforce the circus theory or the carnival theory. We even did a short about this on Game Theory what, last week, where in Ruin, or sorry, not in Ruin, in Help Wanted 2, there's a poster of a carnival, and it's uh, the, the, the Faz, Faz Kate or whatever. There's a, there's a poster of a big top tent and it's dated from, or Fall Fest, sorry, Fall Fest. Right, Fall Fest. And it's dated 1970. So in the past, in Help Wanted 1, there was Fall Fest 1983, which everyone's like, it's the fight of 83, oh my gosh, big deal. But now you have Fall Fest 1970 with a traveling carnival and kind of this circus thing, which is also reinforcing this idea about like, hey, was there a story here or was that like traveling bear circus that I talked about back in the day as the beginning of our timeline? You know, was that bear, the original Freddy Faz bear, a literal bear, part of this circus act back then? Here's the thing. It could be an Easter egg. It could, uh, w welcome to the world of this franchise where it's like, is it an Easter egg? Is this canon? <laughs> what is this? Because, uh, you know, for us, we try to take everything canonically, but also there are times where we're like, this franchise has gotten so big and there's so many moving pieces to keep track of, it's, it's hard. Um, but yeah, that's good call out. And yeah, it, it, it goes to the question of 
when a book becomes a game and the book had its own canon, does the game fall into the, the game canon or the book canon? I would say, and the, kind of my default looking at this would be, it is the book canon, right? Like, because it is an offshoot of a book, I think it falls into the book canon. And so a great example of this is, I think the big twist or kind of one of the big like question marks that Into the Pit raised in its initial story was when Oswald eventually sees the missing children's incident kids. And when he sees the missing children's incident happen, like we all think of missing children's incident as five kids. Five kids went missing, right? It is, you know, it's the five kids went into the suits and question mark, that sucks. Um, but in Into the Pit, it's actually six. Like he says, oh, there's a lineup of six. And everyone's like, six? Why would there be six? That's weird because you should have Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, Golden Freddy. That's your five. So who then is your six? Is that Charlie? Is that the puppet? But puppet comes later. So that was always the thing that people were like, oh, the book canon is different because, you know, it's, it's not one for one. And Scott has been very clear, like they are separate things, but they kind of inform each other and they kind of talk back and forth to each other. So obviously it's changed that one thing that we all knew about the missing children, you know, that it's five kids. That's always the thing. It's always five. And so, oh, they're making it clear that this is not the same missing children's incident, but they're giving us a clue about the date, 1985. And that was kind of the thought. But now if all of a sudden Into the Pit is a thing and there's six kids, do you take that as canon? Is that books? Things like that. I would say keep them still separate. Book things and spinoffs of books are their thing. Game things and spinoffs of game things are their thing. Just like the graphic novels are still in the book. But again, there's a, t there's a dialogue back and forth between the two. So here he goes, here he's, he's running. This is cool. Uh, I don't remember there being any mention of Golden Freddy at all in the book, in Into the Pit. So I'm, it's cool to have this. I also think it's interesting to hide and then unhide? Like, is, is it just saying hide because... Like, maybe we pressed E here and he's in the process of hiding and now it switches to unhide just because he's in the process of hiding. It is weird to say, like, unhide as he's standing outside of it because no one's hiding right now. That's cool, though, to see Golden Freddy. I love that. That's also terrifying. I love that slipping into a, a Springlock suit is as easy as, like, let me just drop this over here. Whoop. Um, that is one of the things that you know, has been speculated about though. And, and one of the things that the books hit over and over again is this idea of people being alive while trapped in the Springlock suit, uh, specifically Golden Freddy, right? Because we've never really known why Cassidy is, you know, the, the vengeful spirit and why they're, you know, Golden Freddy has always been the outlier, right? And so there's been a couple things that the books have thrown out there, right? There have been kids who have basically been Springlocked into the suit um, or trapped in the suit, or like in the original novel series, there was a kid who was basically like spring traps, like, I gotta keep you here, but I'm not ready to kill you yet. So, whoop, and he just like drops a Golden Freddy suit onto him. And the kid's like, oh no, I'm trapped in a Golden Freddy suit. And he's like, don't move, otherwise you're gonna get spring locked like me. And he's like, oh no. So, <laughs> it's like, so the, the way that people have used Golden Freddy suits have been weird, right? You see kids hiding in it and ultimately paying the price for hiding inside of it. You see Springtrap using it as like a yuck, 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 I'm gonna shackle you in here. And you're like, oh no, I'm stuck. Um, and then you obviously have the, the thing that everyone's used to, which is hiding dead bodies inside the suits. And so it's interesting to see Oswald in this game, which again, I don't think happens in the book, him crawling into a Golden Freddy suit to hide. Um, I think that's, that's a cool little detail. And now you get this kind of reference or this callback to FNAF 2 with putting on the mask. This is terrifying. The animation there is so good. This is, this is without question the scariest that Springtrap's ever been. Um, blue eyes, it's interesting. So is this Afton inside of it? Is this just a robot? He looks, he's very robotic. So is this actually Springtrap? That's always been kind of one of the questions of the book or is like, you know, was this actually the guy? Is it a spirit of Springtrap? It's, it's a weird, again, it is a weird story. I am bummed that we're not seeing a, a clip of Springtrap at breakfast, but I guess that wouldn't really work for the gameplay. Um, so this looks awesome. I'm excited about this. I think this is such a cool new visual style for the franchise. I think it works really well. That old NES era aesthetic, I think is great for these sorts of horror games. It, it feels like it's getting back to like that indie feel 
that old, like old uh, FNAF had, and even like you know the, the SNES era, it harkens back to like the old 8-bit mini games, which to this day are my favorite part of this franchise. You know, purple guy coming out with his little like phone crank thing, being like, "You can't save them." You know, th that sort of stuff was so disturbing and so scary. So I'm excited about this. Um, this is from a, a Zelf Willpower uh, over on the Fredit subreddit. Uh, this is the end of the so images were found in a website's metadata. That's nice. I'm glad that they're hiding stuff in, in website metadata again. Interesting. So this, so this is the inside of Jeff's Pizza, but what's fascinating about this is this is a very different graphical style. This is like PS1 era graphics as opposed to that like 16-bit. Um, so I'm wondering if this is an early concept image or like as they were trying to figure out what art style they wanted, or maybe this is like from a cutscene. Um, but the graphical style here is, is very different. Uh, but it is cool to see the pizzeria in modern day and kind of the inside of what Jeff's is. And you, again, you can tell that it doesn't have all the like trappings of the characters on the wall or anything like that. But you do have some of the checkerboard, so you can see how that's kind of persisted over the years. Also got this is oh this is interesting. So this is a back alley. Ooh, hello. Uh, this is back alley of the place, and you got you got our boys, the Trash Pals, hanging out. So again, if this is 1985, unclear whether this is 1985 or present day, I guess. Um, but if you got trash in the gang, they're also here since the beginning. It's interesting how many things and references are happening here in 1985 and how that does or doesn't apply to the lore. Uh, but always, always a fan of trash in the gang. Always a win. I love the fact that they went from like meme characters that were just kind of thrown in, I feel like, to fill out the roster to like, oh no, like... These are actual characters that were put inside of a restaurant for the entertainment of kids. Sure, okay, why not? Um, it would make sense if, if I were doing the lore of this, right? If I were doing the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's I would, and wanted to continue keeping Trash in the gang, I would probably put them in like the FNAF 2 era of like the take apart and put back together game. Um, that's the story about Mangle, right? Was Mangle was all, is the way it is because kids have ripped it apart so many times and put it back together that it creates this weird like Lego-like conglomeration. And so I would see, this is kind of like Ollie's interesting trash pile that he has, you know, where it's like, here's a bunch of random stuff, put it together and there's your character. And I could see that being a very viable reason to have these characters present. But again, here's another reference. There's a pink and white bear. Like, helpy style. Right? I'm not making that up. That's not just a weird pile oh, of trash, is it? No, I, I see it. I see it. For At first, I only saw that pink and purple thing, and I was like, that's a stretch, dude. But no, I see the I see the head around it, and then... Unless this is a trash bag, which it might be a... No, but it's got like the... It's, it's got, got the eye, eyes and the little nose on it. Eyes the and a muzzle. That's weird. And I mean, especially when you zoom out, you can definitely see the shape. Unless it's a trash bag? I don't know, or it could be a hat. That's weird. So we're we're getting a lot of references, and and again, this is also what uh, Help Wanted Two did, which is gave us a lot of references to pink and white animatronics being present in the early days of this franchise, like 1985 era, which back in the day when you're dealing with like robot spaghetti that's able to slither and f fill out suits and stuff. I was like, that's insane. There's no way that's early in the timeline. And yet now it seems like more and more and more, it's like, nope, it was it was there, it was early, it was early, it was early. Um, you even have uh, Bonnie's guitar here. So this must be the past. Although the building's broken down, which makes you think it's been there for a while. Weird, weird. Maybe you're going to a different location and exploring the history of the franchise. I don't know. Like, on one hand, I'm like, oh, this is clearly the back of Jeff's Pizza, but there's a lot of broken windows. Also, that trash must have been in there or outside for a long right? time. Like, yeah. That would be really odd. Yeah, I don't know when this one is, actually. You know, if we're jumping between this, this two, these two timelines of, like, modern day and 1985, I don't know what the back of this building is. That's very strange. But the fact that there's a pink and white potential animatronic bear with these other guys... Timeline, man. Timeline of this game. Oh! <laughs> there he is! There's my boy sitting down to dinner. Oh my god. Yes! Yes! They did do it! Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> so weird. It is so weird. I don't blame you, Oswald. You should be freaked out. Look at this. Casual spring trap, sitting down for some breakfast. <laughs> I love it! 
<laughs> Why, hello, my child. Come, join me for some eats. Oh, that is hilarious. I love it. I love this. I'm so happy that they're including this. I've, it's, it, to me, it's the most memorable part of that story is it's just a random spring trap sitting down at your breakfast table hanging out with you. Uh, is this... I'm assuming this is a nightmare. So I'm assuming that this is... What am I, what, what am I assuming here? Okay, I, I, this has got to be Oswald's room. Um, just because in the... He's got a purple family. This is, they're, they're throwing in all sorts of weird references and Easter eggs here, my friends. Um, the reason I say that this would be Oswald's room, most likely, is because of the Godzilla here. Um, one of the things in the story that I remember and I, I had marked out in my mind is like, oh, that's interesting, is he and his dad bond over watching, I think it's watching, watching like an old like Godzilla-esque movie or like Godzilla-esque character. So that makes sense. We also know that Oswald likes drawing characters. Um, I believe in the original story, he's an artist and he, he talks a lot about, or the story makes a big deal of how he draws these characters and how he's inexplicably drawn to the, the franchise, right? Where he's drawn these like creepy robot animals. And so I'm assuming that these are his drawings. The fact that his whole family is purple or that this family photo of whatever is purple is strange. Even stranger is the fact that his room is kind of falling apart. So I'm wondering if this is some sort of like nightmare sequence or something to kind of indicate like, hey, we're in nightmare mode, or this is a darker area, or somehow the world has shifted. I mean, it could be his house. Um, but usually in a video game, you would do this only if you're showcasing like, hey, this is not like the real world. And also the purple coloring on the walls and the fact that everything's kind of like shaded over. It feels like it's more of a nightmare or dream sequence. Uh, this guy, is this FNAF, is that FNAF 4? <coughs> They're throwing in all the references, aren't they? Can I open you up in a new tab? There, it's a little bit better. I'm wondering if it's the same guy here. See him? Little like creepy caterpillar bug guy. Creepy caterpillar, it's a different color. He's got a green face. He's got a yellow face, but obviously like very clearly cut from a similar cloth or a reference to them. Um, I'm wondering if they're trying to connect this in some way or like kind of make like a winking reference to FNAF 4. That's my gut. Like, oh, maybe, maybe he's from FNAF 4, but he's like, clearly Oswald's not, but it's just one of those things, FNAF 4, and there's, yeah, the quilt is, is adjacent, but not exact, right? Yeah, it's not, not quite, but you still have a similar sort of pattern. Uh, yeah, so it's, 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 referencing and kind of similar but different the idea of we're gonna probably have to hide in some closets and then spring trip's gonna pop out of others hide out of beds all that classic stuff um oh hello jeff's pizza weird okay um so this is also part of the yeah images found in the website metadata huh the only pizza in town Ooh, ooh, word games uh order online jeff's pizza dot club Dot club. Oh no! They're not ready for it yet. Maybe as we get closer to the game, Jeff's Pizza dot club. But yeah, I'll keep those in mind for sure. Open 10 to 2 every day. Very limited hours. Good lunch place. Mozzarella cheese. Slice whole. Green pepper, onion, sausage, mushroom, pepperoni, anchovy. Supreme. Half cheese, half sausage. No cheese, half beef. Added ingredients. Not bad. You can, you, if you want to figure out the year, you can figure out what the price of an average slice is. Fountain soda, iced tea, and water. Ask about our monthly specials. I think he got lemonade in the story. Though, <laughs> I like that Jeff's Pizza, their, their subtitle is the only pizza in town. You have no choice but to eat here. Enjoy. That's funny. But again, the funny thing about that though too is right, if, if they're saying the only pizza in town, it showcases that there is no Freddy's, right? Like, so when you go to Freddy's, it is this like difference in time. And then this, I'm very intrigued by this. This is what I'm excited about. Kids menu. Cheese pizza slice, pepperoni pizza slice. Are the prices different? The prices are different. Pepperoni pizza slice. Oh no, three bucks, three bucks. Myster mystery pizza slice. <laughs> I worry about that. Pink frosted cupcake, fountain soda, ice cold water. Oh man, ice cold water for a buck. Fountain soda for a buck? And the ice cold water is also a buck? Oh, easy every time. You know what you're going for. This is a fun maze. Is it solvable? Yeah, you go up there, through there. 
That seems super fun. Connect the kids to the pizza slice. Who gets the most pizza? I love these sorts of games. Unless they're in like Mr. Lemons or Ms. Ms. Tomato, Ms. Lemons. Let's see. Pizza scramble. P-I-Z-Z. -Z. Pizza. Ham. Cheese. Done. Make your own pizza. Whoa. Word scramble. All right. I don't have the time to do it now, but I'm curious about this. Because the last time we had a word scramble in this franchise was in the security logbook, and it gave us Cassidy's name. And the way that we solved it, right, was if you, if you circled everything, all the, like, clues and answers and whatever, the letters you were left with was, or it was, if you, cir it was all it's me, right? It was it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, repeated over and over and over again. And if you circled everything, you wound up with the letters C-A-S-S-I-D-Y, which gave us Cassidy, which was the big reveal of, like, the, hey, that's the vengeful spirit, right? This looks not to be the same. And as I look at it, I'm just trying to see if there's anything that stands out. Just as I like any weird repeated letters or things that are like child. I see child right there. There's liver. Oh, nice. Liver. Is it, uh, there's, yeah, child, Jake. No, no, Jack, clone. No. Yeah, I'd be curious though if you do this. This is harder than I, it's a, it's a, I think the like alternating like colors and letters makes it actually harder. Cause usually I'm able to like spot at least a couple of the basic ones pretty easily. But this is surprisingly difficult to just make out immediately. But yeah, I, I, I want to know, like, hey, is there anything in here if you solve it? That's cool, though. I like it. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Nothing in the background images that really knocks it out. None of the kids strike me as particularly like, oh, this is like, you know, the puppet or the crying child or whatever. Um, yeah. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Into the pit. Fazbear Frights' his first story. I am excited about this. This is very cool. Um, and then, oh, into the pit. There's one picture into the pit picture. Because <coughs> there was like one image that was cut from the final thing, right? I just throw it back here. Yeah, there you go. There he is. <laughs> there he goes. Popping out. Hey, guys. And there's Oswald. So, I mean, it is adhering pretty well to, to the image of the book. So this was never published, I don't think. Uh, all the Fazbear Frights books had like one image associated with each of them and then just didn't, they ended up not making the final cut of the books or whatever. Um, but this was definitely one of them. I think one of the things that people always memed on was the fact that like Oswald's arm is literally being like squeezed off right here. <laughs> like his hand, his hand do be getting squeezed to death. And then I think his dad got like bonked on the head or something, but that's why he's got a scratch up there. Um, but it's like, he's got a weird star pattern up there. Um, still got those arms though, arms for days. And I'm sure the spring trap's got the back. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that, my friends, is Into the Pit. I am excited. This might end up being my final FNAF game. Aww. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe, maybe Tom or you or whoever will let me come back onto GT Live and yeah, play FNAF together. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'll just play it on my own. That'd be very sad. Yeah. We can't let that happen. No, certainly not. No. We must theorize. We, we simply got to theorize. Simply must. Uh, anyway, that's, so that's Into the Pit. I'm very, very excited about this. I'm excited to hear that, like, Five Nights at Freddy's is still alive and kicking. And, you know, that there is something in the year of 2024. New book, new coloring book, new game. Uh, this looks very, very cool. Uh, so, that being said, I think we're, I think I've talked about this one minute of content for a sufficient amount of time. I feel like we've gotten a lot out of it. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot to chew on. I think there's a lot of questions that this opens up. Um, and I'm curious to see how they translate this story into the games and whether they're going to do more of these too. Uh, certainly there are some stories that lend themselves better to the games. Even this one is, is an odd one. Like I said, like it's, it's mostly a static story of just like creepy existential horror until the end when finally there's a battle. Um, so I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it. If it's going to be the mo probably mostly like hiding, running away, gathering clues and solving a mystery as opposed to like, oh, we're going to fight Springtrap and stuff, uh, which I think is a, a good one. You know, feeling like a lack of power in the face of this like evil entity. I think it's cool. But yeah, can't wait to see when that one comes out. And that's it. So without any further ado, my friends, thank you so much for watching. And remember, it was a video, a video for you. See ya. No, it wasn't a live stream. No, it was just a video. It was just a video. No, no need to remind them it wasn't live. They know. They, they know. know it wasn't a live stream. It's like, it's like what our guy said. Yeah. They'll know. They'll know. They'll understand. Yeah. They hear it in their hearts. <laughs> in their heart and in, souls. In their heart and souls. It wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for them. For them. For you.